pelvic floor, which is usually separating the pelvic cavity from the perineum. I have here, this is above here is the pelvic cavity, and downward here I will form the perineum. And I will tell you from skin to inside the peritoneum here, what are the layers when you are passing from downward above. Please keep these layers. You should keep them all layers from skin to the peritoneum in patient who is sitting in the lysotomy position. You will see first, you can take notes beside me. You will see first skin, thin. You have what's called coolis fascia. Coolis fascia is an extension of the superficial fascia of the abdomen, downward over the perineum, which is called the coolis fascia. After the coolis fascia, I will have the superficial perineal pouch and deep perineal pouch, which separating them is called the perineal membrane. Perineal membrane. Then I have skin, coolis fascia, superficial perineal pouch, perineal membrane, and the deep perineal pouch. Then I will have superficial layer of urogenital diaphragm. Then urogenital diaphragm itself. Then into pelvic fascia. Later on, I will see the peritoneum. Okay. Then from skin upward, I will go through skin, coolis fascia, superficial perineal pouch, which is separated from deep perineal pouch by the perineal membrane. Then I will have the endopelvic fascia or urogenital diaphragm. Urogenital diaphragm has superficial fascia and has lining endopelvic fascia. Then above them, I will see the peritoneum. So please keep this. I have what's called the pelvic floor or pelvic diaphragm. Pelvic diaphragm is formed of two muscles. Two muscles, they are called the levator inoi and coccygeus muscle. I have here, I will zoom on it. Here, I have the levator inoi. These are three parts of the levator inoi. Three parts of the levator inoi. Levator inoi is originated. I will try to draw. Here, I have what's called the symphysis pubis. Then I have the body of the pubic bone. Then I have the ischial tuberosity, which is found here. Then I have the sacrum posterior. Okay, you have here symphysis pubis. I have here the inferior pubic ramus. It is called pubic ramus. I have the ischial tuberosity. Okay, from the sacrum to the ischial tuberous, I have ligament here, which is called sacrotuberous ligament. Okay, sacrotuberous ligament. This is a diamond shape. This diamond shape is the perineum area. Perineum area in the center of perineum area, I have what's called perineal body. Perineal body. Then I will take an imaginary line here from post ischial tuberosities. I will divide this perineum into anterior and the posterior. Anterior triangle is called the urogenital triangle, while posterior triangle is called the anal triangle. Okay, urogenital and anal triangle. Then, what is the origin of the levator in eye muscle? From the back of the body of the pubis. Then, I have here what's called tendinous arch, which is lining the inner aspect of the pubic ramus, attached from the symphysis pubis to the ischial spine. Then backward to the tuberosity. This is called the tendinous arch. Tendinous arch on this side and tendinous arch on this side. They are meeting together within the midline into median raphe and into the perineal body. This is the origin and insertion of levator in eye muscle. Again, which is forming the pelvic floor or pelvic diaphragm, it is originated from the back of the symphysis pubis back of the body of the pubic arch or the pubic arch in fewer pubic ramus, then ischial spine. Then I have downwards into the medial raphe to be inserted also into the perineal body. And the please focus, I have here the rectum and in female, I will have here the vaginal orifice. Okay, then when you have here the urethral orifice, and you have here the vaginal orifice, and this is the 
perineal body. This perineal body is divided into three muscles. Okay, this levator ulna, excuse me, is divided into three muscles. When you are going here, you will have what's called anterior to it. I will erase that and this. Okay. Then anterior here, I will have fibers here from the levator ulna. They are forming sphincter vaginal muscle. These are the anterior fibers, which are called sphincter vaginal muscle. Please focus. Then I will have also in the middle, I will form the pubo rectalis muscle. Here, it will take fibers from the pubis to posterior to the rectum. Then when I have sphincter vaginae, these are the anterior fibers. Or when there is male, I will have what's called levator prostate. Then, posterior to the rectum, it will form the puporectalis muscle. Puporectalis muscle, which is forming the curvature of the rectum and forming what's called inorectal ring. Okay? Part of the inorectal ring is the puporectalis muscle. Then, I will have what's called iliocoxygeous muscle. This is the posterior part. Okay? Iliocoxygeous. These are parts also of the elevator in you know, after it inserts in the medial raphe and in the perineal body, I have three separate fibers. The anterior fiber is the sphincter vagina or elevator prostate. In the middle, it is the puporectalis forming the inorectal ring, and I have posterior is the iliocoxygeus. Okay, this is the perineum, and these are the muscles of the elevator in you know. Then, I will have another muscle which is called the coxygeus. This coxygeus is originated from sacrospinous ligament to be inserted into coccyx from sacrospinous ligament here i have the sacrum and here i have the ischial tuberosity and the spine will be here from the sacrospinous ligament to the coccyx then let's go for another topic regarding perineum when I'm talking about per name, I say it is a diamond shape, diamond in shape. I have anterior is the symphysis pubis. I have here on both sides is the ischial tuberosity and the posterior is sacrum. In the center, I have the perineal body and I have here a measure line between them to invert it into anterior, which is called the urogenital triangle and the posterior, which is called the anal triangle. And I have layers, I have say from skin, then coolest fascia, superficial perineal pouch, perineal membrane, deep perineal pouch, pelvic fascia or fascia lining, the urogenital diaphragm, the neurogenital diaphragm itself, then into pelvic fascia and the peritoneum. These are the layers from skin to peritone. Okay, I have here structures passing through the greater and lesser sciatic foramen. And this is just a slight revision because we take this in lower limb anatomy. I will show you here. I have structures passing through greater and lesser sciatic foramina. Here, in this picture. This is the greater sciatic notch. This is the ischial spine. This is the lesser sciatic notch. And the muscle which is passing through the greater sciatic foramen is called the pyriformis muscle. One of the six lateral rotators of the hip muscle it is the pyriformis muscle, which is originated from the anterior surface of the body of the sacrum to be inserted into muscles are forming P O G O, which are inserted into the greater trochanter of the femur. Pyriformis obturator internus and gluteus medius hominimus and superior inferior gemelloid. They are inserted into the greater trochanter of the femur. Then I have structures above pyriformis and structures below the pyriformis. Above the pyriformis, I will go with superior gluteal nerve and vessels. While below pyriformis, I will go with inferior gluteal nerve and vessels plus pudendal nerve, tendon of obturator internus. Also, I will have the sciatic nerve, posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh, and nerve to quadratus femoris. Then I will have a structure passing through the lesser sciatic foramina, and they are four structures. Nerve to obturator internus, tendon of obturator internus, the nerve, and the internal the artery. Okay, 
نيرف اوف اوبتيريتور انترنس اند تندن اوف اوبتيريتور انترنس بيودندال نيرف اند انترنال بيودندال اورتري ذيس ار ذا ستراكشرز باسينج ثرو ذا ليسر سياتيك فورامينا زين هير اي ويل هاف ستراكشر ويتش از كولد ذا اوبتيريتور كانال اوبتيريتور كانال وير اي هاف هير ذا اوبتيريتور فورامين اوكي اوبتيريتور فورامين ذيس از which is closing here, closed by the obturator internus muscle. I have here canal, which is found between the pubis and the tendon of obturator internus. It is called obturator canal. Obturator canal for passage of obturator nerve and obturator vessels. Okay, obturator nerve and obturator vessels. This is called obturator canal. So I have obturator canal, greater sciatic foramen, and lesser sciatic foramen. Then I have discussed muscles of the pelvic floor, which are salivator eni and coccygeus muscle. Then let's go to urogenital triangle and its contents. I say it's a urogenital triangle, which is forming the anterior boundary here, which is forming the anterior boundary between the symphysis pupus, and I have the pubic ramus, and I have here the ischial tuberosity, then sacrum, I have sacrotuberous ligament, central perineal tendon, then I have line, a measure line between it. And this line is the site of the superficial and the deep transverse peronei muscle. Superficial and deep transverse peronei muscle. Okay, I will show you a very important picture regarding contents of the superficial and the deep perineal pouches. We have here, this is the deep. I will show you the superficial perineal pouch. Okay. Here, we will go through structures passing in the superficial perineal pouch. I have urogenital triangle, which is bounded by the pubic ramus and the ischial tuberosity and the anterior is the symphysis pubis. What are the structures passing through the superficial perineal pouch? Structures passing through the superficial perineal pouch, I have here, I will try to draw, symphysis pubis and this is the ischial tuberosity. And here is the back of the pubis and this is the perineal body. I have three muscles. First muscle is the superficial transverse perineal muscle on both sides of the perineal body. Then I have here what's called in male, I have pulp of penis. I have here what's called pulp of penis. Then I have here two crura, two crura over the pubic ramus. They are called two crura of penis. Then I have first transverse peroneal, superficial transverse peroneal muscle. Then I have here pulp of penis on both sides. I have here crust of penis on both sides. Then also I have two important muscles on both sides. In this side, it is called the ischiocavernosus muscle. And on this side, it is called pulpospongiosus muscle. So I have three muscles, superficial transverse peroneal and pulp ischio cavernosus and palpo spongiosus. Then I have bulb here of penis and crust of penis. What about vessels passing through it? Very important to know that I have dorsal artery of penis and artery of bulb. I have here the bulb and I have here the penis. So artery of the bulb and the dorsal artery of penis. Then also I have posterior scrotal arteries and posterior scrotal nerves scrotal arteries and scrotal nerves. So please keep this. I have three muscles, which are superficial transverse peroneal muscle, ischiocavernosus and pulpospongiosus. Then I have pulp of penis, crust of penis, and dorsal artery of penis, posterior scrotal artery and posterior scrotal nerve, and the dorsal nerve of penis also. These are the structures passing through the superficial perineal pouch. What are the boundaries of the superficial perineal pouch? I say it skin is the first one, then over it is a coolest fascia. So coolest fascia will be the lowest part. 
Then I have the superficial perineal pouch and above it is the perineal membrane. So above it will be perineal membrane and below it will be colis fascia. This is the site of the superficial perineal pouch. And all the structures passing through it should be kept. But here, please do not keep this schedule for muscles within the deep perineal pouch. Just to know their names, to know their names only. Then we will go to the deep perineal pouch. I will share to you the deep perineal pouch. Here is the deep perineal pouch. I have here the deep perineal pouch. You will see in this picture, this is skin, colis fascia, superficial perineal pouch, and the perineal membrane, then deep perineal pouch, endopelvic fascia, fascia covering the pelvic floor, then fascia also, then peritone. Okay, these are the layers from outside to inside the abdomen. So I have here the deep perineal pouch, which is bounded superiorly by the superficial fascia over the pelvic floor and the inferiorly by the perineal membrane. What are the contents of the deep perineal pouch? To see here, we have content of the perineal pouch, either in male or female, there are seven contents. We will go first. I have here the urethra. Urethra is surrounded by sphincter urethra. Then I have deep transverse perineal muscle. You remember I say within the superficial perineal pouch, here on both sides of the perineal membrane, it is called superficial transverse perineal muscle. But here in the deep perineal pouch, I have deep transverse perineal muscle. And surrounding the membranous urethra, I have the external urethral sphincter or sphincter urethra. Then I will have artery and nerve. Artery is the internal pudendal artery. I will show you here. And the nerve is the dorsal nerve of penis. Dorsal nerve of penis and the deep dorsal nerve of penis are the two terminal branches of the pudendal nerve. I have the pudendal nerve, which is a branch from the sacral plexus, SC234, 234. Pudendal nerve is a branch from sacral plexus, and we will discuss sacral plexus in details. We'll give you dorsal nerve of penis and deep dorsal nerve of penis. Arteries passing through the deep perineal pouch are two terminal branches of the internal pudendal artery, which are called dorsal artery of penis and the deep dorsal artery of penis. Then I have the two nerves, which are termination of the pudendal nerve, dorsal nerve of penis, and the deep dorsal nerve of penis. Then two muscles, I said the two muscles are the sphincter urethra and the deep transverse peroneal muscle. Okay, I have here opening of the two pulpourethral glands. I have two pulpourethral glands on both sides here to open in the posterior aspect of the membranous urethra and some plexus of vein. And corresponding to it in female, I will see also urethra and the vagina. It's seen here, dorsal nerve of clitoris corresponding to dorsal nerve of penis, termination of superudendal artery, sphincter urethra, the transverse perineal and plexus of veins. These are the structures passing through the deep perineal pouch. So please keep it. Then we have finished perineum. 